Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea for our Monday morning, December 21st, uh, Gold and Silver Update. Um, kind of an exciting night last night with uh, Precious Metals if you were up watching Gold and Silver like I do 24 hours a day. <laughs> Just joking, I don't do that, but uh, overnight markets last night were very exciting. Uh, leads me to believe that perhaps we will have strength in this market this week. Uh, maybe not monkey hammering. However, New York is kind of looking a little funny at its open. So anyway, let me do a couple things here before I get into that. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, the golden lady. I thought she was going to sleep all this week, but uh, apparently she's not. Like I said, overnight markets are up. And uh, uh, again, New York's kind of a little tepid here, but uh, I'll get to that in a bit. So uh, this is what I expected for the week, just kind of like a sleepy market. But we're not getting it. Uh, what we are getting, and by the way, uh, be the first to name the... Uh, uh, a movie which this represents, this picture represents, and come in. I'll give you a free one tenth ounce. Uh, it looks like a silver eagle, but it's actually just a one tenth ounce piece of silver. I'll give you a free one if you can name the lady and come in. But you got to come in and pick it up uh, like a week or so. <laughs> I can't remember these things six months later, although I'll still be good on them. Uh, let's take a look and see what's going on. First, I'll start with a few articles. Well, the big news out there uh, is uh, the stimulus deal. Congress reaches agreement on a $900 billion stimulus deal. Why $900 billion? Because they don't want to say a trillion. And that's the truth. You know, that's what politicians do. They make things seem a lot less worse than they are. And that's exactly why they didn't go for $1 trillion, because they knew that Americans would just kind of freak out at that trillion word. Uh, we're still not used to the word trillion yet. Uh, however, we will get very used to it very shortly, because things will cost trillions. Uh, so a $900 billion stimulus deal has been reached by Nancy Pelosi and uh, 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 what is it, uh, uh, Schumer. So Pelosi, Senate Minority Leader Schumer, and uh, uh, whoever else is supposed to be in on that deal, they've agreed to spend another $900 billion. You know, really a trillion dollars, uh, but let's not say that, uh, that we don't have and that we can't afford. But uh, that's all right. You know, if they don't pay off all these people that they employed, if they don't pay off the 50 million plus people they employed and the, the millions of business they put out of business uh, over this uh uh, if they don't do that, there's going to be tar and feathering happening. And uh, I think that is why these politicians are pulling the trigger on money we don't have. However, what most people that are getting these checks don't realize, and what most people don't realize is that this is very costly. This kills the U.S. dollar. Uh, no country, no entities that have a half a brain are going to want to sit with U.S. dollars with us doing this. All those dollars are going to come flock home. You know what that means? Uh, it means dollar deflation, which people actually mistake for inflation, which means that things are going to cost a lot more. I was joking with a friend of mine yesterday. I said, well, you know, uh, he says, well, they'll give everybody a, a stimulus check. I said, well, you know, that'll, be, that'll just cheapen the money. I said, uh, not, a loaf of bread will be $19. He says, well, you're not too far off. There's $7 where I live now. I kind of gasp because I don't buy bread. Um, <laughs> I can't eat bread. Uh, I'm allergic to, uh, I'm, you know, I can't eat glutens. Anyways, uh, so I was like, really? It's $7 for a loaf of bread? It's already worse than I thought. Uh, so let's move along here. Uh, let's just say that there are no fiscal conservatives, except for maybe Rand Paul. There are no fiscal, uh, except for Rand Paul, there are no fiscal conservatives whatsoever in Washington, D.C. Uh, and they're going to crush the dollar. And unknowingly, even though people will be getting these checks, stimulus checks, and they'll be like, okay, I got something from the government. Thank you. I'll vote for you or whoever gave me the stimulus, uh, which is really what it's for as well. Uh, as long as it's also... It's for politicians not to get tarred and feathered. It's also for politicians to get reelected. So there's a twofold reason to these stimuluses: uh, not to get tarred and feathered, and hopefully to get reelected if they if they play it right. But really, what they're doing is they're destroying the dollar, and people don't realize how bad that can be for them. Uh, I'm not sure which is worse. Again, the uh, uh, the cure by giving people twelve hundred dollars is uh, is is actually worse than the disease, which is uh, killing the U.S. dollar. Uh, and I have a feeling they're going to kill the U.S. dollar. They already have. So let's just move along from there. We've talked about that enough. Uh, Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> J.P. Morgan thinks that nothing can stop it now at $650,000. Weren't these the same people that told their clients to buy bad uh, mortgage uh, bonds and bad mortgage investments? Uh, meanwhile, they were betting against their own clients. Huh? Remember that? No? No? I do. So, <laughs> so they're saying that 
Uh, nothing can stop it now. You know why? Because they are the big whale. They're one of the big whales in bitcoins, I bet. Uh, you know, that unregulated Wild West marketplace that uh, uh, is not regulated yet and not illegal yet. But uh, they're out there uh, as legally as they can making money in an unregulated marketplace. Who do you think are the best in the world at doing these kind of things, make manipulating markets? JP, these kind of guys. Uh, and anyone that thinks that they're not heavy, heavy, heavy into the uh, Bitcoin market, uh, as heavy as they can be, remember, the money in Bitcoin is just a drop in the bucket for them. It's nothing, really. Uh, and where was that? I kind of saw that down here. Uh, compared to gold and compared to other things, uh, JPM puts it alternative currencies. And I kind of like that they called it alternative currencies. Uh, but they call gold an alternative currency. It's not an alternative gold, uh, currency. Gold is money. Don't let them fool you into thinking it is not, and they know it as well. And Bitcoin is fiat. So is U.S. dollar. So is whatever JPM is selling you is fiat, in fiat. Uh, so let's see. A stunning chart shows in a world that has seen the value of total bonds increase by 13.1 trillion equities by 11 trillion. Bitcoin's amazing run took place as the market cap of Bitcoin rose a paltry 0.3 trillion dollars. That's really, you know, but trillions are a lot. But that's hold on. That's uh, 0.3 trillion dollars would be, uh, you know, three billion dollars, uh, which is uh, one third of less of what Congress just approved today. Uh, this was enough to put the price of the cryptocurrency to an all time of 24,000. Even gold's far more muted return in 2020 was thanks to a far greater increase in gold's market value of roughly 0.5 trillion dollars. So gold's still mm, market caps. Uh, I know which I'd rather own, and uh, I know which is a lot less. It's, you know, don't don't be uh, under any illusion that uh, uh, J.P. Morgan and these guys don't fool around with gold and silver markets. But gold and silver markets are a lot more regulated than the crypto markets. Uh, and there's also that pesky little deal they have to deal with is even though they have paper, they have to somewhat prove that there's gold to back that paper. So a lot more regulated in the gold market, and they still fudge with it. Let me move along to the next thing here that uh, what I was just telling you a little bit, uh, JP calls it an alternate currency bullshit. If it was an alternate currency, why would central banks own it? And central banks run the world. The presidents don't run the world. Politicians don't really run the world. Um, you know, in my belief, I know it's a little sounds a little tinfoil hatty, but um, I think that covert agencies may run the world. Uh, but in, in essence, I believe bankers do run the world. And, uh, uh, and bankers own gold. Their clients own gold. The wealthiest in the world own gold. Uh, uh, why do you think central banks hold gold? Why do you think that when Russia and China started to see that they were being kicked out of the U.S. dollar or that the uh, United States was weaponized, weaponizing the U.S. dollar, they decided, what, would, what did they do? They, they, they upped their gold backing, their gold supply, because they knew if they were issuing currencies, uh, that they had to buy things and they couldn't buy them with U.S. dollars. They have to buy them with rubles or the, the yuan or whatever the Chinese are using. Uh, and they would have to back that currency with something, which is gold, which is real money. So they're backing their supposed money with what? Gold. Real money. So don't let uh, uh, Goldman Sachs ever fool you into thinking that uh, uh, gold is not money. Uh, or any of these other uh, uh, fools uh, let you think that gold is not money. It is the truest money we have. That's why central banks own it. And now I forget why I was going to talk about central banks here. Uh, well, more or less, I think that was kind of it. The rise of gold and reserve portfolios. Well, why do you think that uh, uh, central banks, uh, and right here, most central banks plan to maintain or further increase gold allocations? Uh, yeah, the stuff they told you is an old relic and not used anymore. The, the people that run the world are increasing their supply. Come on, think about this for a second. Really? Are they increasing their supply of cryptos? No, they're creating their own cryptos. <laughs> and then they'll make the other ones illegal. What they are doing is the people that can create cryptos and make Bitcoin illegal, they're increasing their gold supply. Think about this, people. Use some logic. Uh, so anyways, uh, kind of interesting article here. All that glitters. Survive, surveying the central banks on gold reserves. I recommend you read that uh, if you don't believe that uh, bankers run the world, if you don't believe what they think is money, what they know is money is gold. They don't think their own currency is real money. They don't think cryptos are real money. They know gold is real money, but they just don't want you to know that. 
Uh, and that's my opinion. I don't think there's some guy in a black suit behind a desk saying, don't let them find out. I just think there's basic ignorance, and they continue to, uh, and other people continue to uh, uh, push this bullshit that gold is not money. Uh, anyways, let me move along here. Uh, gold projected higher post-correction. Uh, we looked at this article the other day, and I was and I was commenting that it's kind of interesting because I did notice that some holiday seasons, remember we've been talking about getting monkey hammer gold and silver and, 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 and platinum, but platinum's on its own now. That's a whole different discussion. Gold and silver getting kind of monkey hammered around the holidays. They always do. They seem to. Uh, uh, when the uh, trading is real slow, they seem to get monkey hammered. So I said, well, you know, look out this month, you know, for monkey hammering around Christmas holiday and the uh, New Year's holiday. And uh, uh, it seems to uh, uh, always happen around holidays. But I had forgotten that there did seem to be some seasonal strength. And I can't remember exactly when and how often, but I do remember some seasonal strength because I look at this stuff every day for uh, I can't tell you how many years. Uh, and uh, they had mentioned the seasonal strength, but they had mentioned that uh, reminder 22nd of December through the 31st of uh, December marks a window of the start of a fairly consistent bullish seasonality over the past 10 years. However, uh, there's not, it's not really been 10 years. Uh, I went and looked myself. I was trying to think, I don't remember 10 years of continuous up markets. So I took a look at uh, Kitco's charts here. Uh, they do good charts, uh, I will say that. And uh, let's take a look at 2016, because 2015 was a crap year for the season. And so was the earlier years. It doesn't seem that metals really started to kick off until, uh, uh, oh, give me one second until about 2016. Uh, and then again, look, it kind of fell here in December around Christmas time. But there's that little rise. I'll go to January. So there's your seasonal rise, your first seasonal rise during Christmas. If you look during the Christmas holidays and then through uh, December here, take a look at this. Uh, and now I'm going to move on to 18 because like I said, it hasn't been 10 years like the author of the article said. It's been a couple years here. I'm going to go to 18. Uh, let's see here, September, October, November, December, there, oh no, I'm 17, I'm sorry. And here again, we see uh, 16, 17, that's two years now, we see that seasonal strength right before the holidays, okay? So yeah, there has been some seasonal strength, but it hasn't been 10 years. That's what kind of got me a little confused because it didn't seem like it's been 10 years. Uh, but it has been the last couple of years, and let's see if this trend continues, but I'm going to kind of go along to 2020 here now. Uh, February, we're going to go to 18, so let's go to... Uh, uh, August, September, there we go, December, and again, seasonal, look at that, right before the holidays, 18, that'll be three years now, continuing that we've seen seasonal strength. Uh, so, good call by him, I kind of forgot about this December strength a little bit, because it all melds together after 30, 40 years, uh, but it absolutely, uh, it did spark something in me, enough to make me look here. Uh, in 2019, let's go to, uh, again, we're going to go to uh, December and see what the seasonal strength was last year and uh, here we go uh, and again look look at this right here we did get that seasonal strength as well last year um, into January and I do remember that and we had some great strength all year this year just a little bit of weakness during November and October that's typical but uh, yeah let's take a look again here and it looks like we are seeing some seasonal strength here as well uh, during the holidays but here we are today and that brings up, oh, before I get to the markets, and gold jumps, 2020 American Silver Eagle sales top 30 million freaking coins, 10%. If 10%, of, well, a little bit less than 10%, if 9% of the population bought one uh, uh, Silver Eagle um, <laughs> each, that would be uh, uh, 30 million. There's 329 million people in the United States and change. Uh, so 30 million is almost 10% of the population that would have bought one silver eagle each. Uh, keep going, USA. Buy more silver eagles. We'll drive silver up even higher. Anyways, as I was saying here, uh, take a look at this December chart right here. And it is seasonal up since 2016. So that's a four-year Christmas seasonal up. And let's take a look at today's spot prices. I'm going to refresh this real quick and see where we are. Uh, let's take a look. Well, it looks that way. Uh, world markets, first thing I want to take a look is, remember I told you earlier, the strength overnight. Look at that, 1906.88. Uh, 
And really, if you think about it, Silverman just leading the way, that craziness of silver, 27.41. Uh, and we're down quite a bit from that, but overnight, 27.41. Uh, that's before many of us went to bed. Well, that's before any of us went to bed, unless you're a late night person. Um, but that was late in the middle hours of the evening, a.m. hours, uh, when these numbers occurred. And again, look at that number, 1906.88. Uh, there was quite a bit of buying going on, too. It, you know, monkey hammering can occur when they sell and when they buy. It's kind of odd that the markets were so high in the evening like that on a Sunday evening. So, uh, And maybe people were just anticipating what's going to happen Monday today, uh, which it looks like it is. It's going to be up. Uh, I see up markets here. Uh, New York spot markets are going to be the same as the world markets right now. Uh, so again, let's move over to silver, 2621, a high of 2741. That's a hell of a range. Uh, and a low of 2516. Look at that range. That's uh, over two bucks, man. Uh, and silver, again, that's quite a range. 1862 to 1906. That's a uh, 40 something dollar range for sure. 44, is it? Uh, platinum completely deco decoupled again. What is going on with platinum? I mean, it's doing its own thing. I mean, when when silver and gold were getting monkey hammered, uh, platinum shot up dramatically. It went up to 1050. Uh, now gold and silver are getting uh, really good uh, ups today, and uh, it looks like platinum's taking a, a mini dump again, but still above that thousand dollar mark. And if you wonder why I don't talk to platinum, because nobody cares. Nobody ever asks about it. Uh, so that's really about it. My prediction is, uh, geez, you know, that seasonality strength we've had since 2016 appears like it might be carrying through right now. Uh, maybe there won't be a chance to buy the dip during the holidays, but we still got a couple days left this week and we still have the uh, uh, um, before uh, January 1st. You never know. Uh, just because something's kind of been strong for four years and seasonal uh, doesn't mean it'll stay that way. And again, pre-2016, uh, pre there wasn't that pre-seasonal strength. So these trends do last sometimes. And again, I'm all about trends. And the only reason is, is because I see it. I have to follow this stuff every day. So you start to see trends in your brain. Uh, you wake up seeing trends. Uh, so you start to be familiar with these particular trends. And that, that's kind of how I trade. And that's how I look at the whole gold and silver market, just trends. Um, I'm not a graph guy. I'm not a chart guy. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Uh, I'll leave this report as short as I possibly can. Spot prices are cool. Hey, one more quick update. Let's just see if it's up. 1884, 85. Oh, hang on. Uh, and let's do that. Ready? Nope, down four bucks. So let's see if it kind of holds up uh, from last night's close. Uh, you saw what? Here, 1906. Let's see if it pops even closer to that level today. Um, if it follows world markets, it will. If uh, there's monkey hammering going on, yeah, maybe it won't. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Call me anytime at 954-493-8811 for gold and silver updates with the best products out there, which are still crude rands and 90% at the moment. Uh, sorry to sound like a broken record. And as I said, uh, we beat all online sellers' prices and we beat all the local prices. Uh, so, you know, give us a shot. Uh, if our prices seem a little bit off, tell us who quoted you and uh, how much. Uh, and again, we'll beat all uh, other sellers out there. And what else was I going to say? Hey, listen, if you don't live in our area too, uh, you know, because we're in we're brick and mortar, we don't sell online. So sorry about that, folks. If you want to buy online from me, you can't. I only sell face to face. I only do face to face business. I find it much safer uh, for both of us. Uh, but if you do, uh, if you can't uh, buy from me, low, you know, you can't buy from me. Uh, I encourage you not to buy online anyway, uh, even though you should check prices there with the legit uh, online sellers. They're not bad people. Uh, the only reason I say buy locally is because it keeps the money local. Keep your money local. In these times, in these upcoming times, I can't tell you how important keeping your money local is. Uh, avoid online uh, resellers. You know That includes Amazon. I've cut my Amazon sales or, or purchases way down. I'm trying to buy local now. I know how important it is. Uh, so try to keep the money local. Uh, you know, if they can match the prices of the online sellers, great. If they can get even close to it, great. Uh, but I encourage you to stick with uh, local uh, precious metal and coin dealers. Well, thanks for watching. If anything really crazy happens, I will do another video today. If not, let's see what happens tomorrow. And happy holidays, folks. Uh, stay safe and enjoy your families and friends. Um, I can't tell you how important that is, and sometimes we lose sight of that. Focus on your family, focus on your friends and the people around you, your neighbors, and uh, uh, those are the important things in your life. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.